Hey, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for the first Working From Home Tools, Strategies, and Best Practices webinar. Um, our goal for this webinar is to have it somewhat like a town hall, like a live session where we can have a conversation about your biggest concerns. We put together a few slides um, that we will go through fairly quickly. Um, feel free to answer, to ask questions throughout the, um, throughout the course of the webinar. When we open it up, we'll be answering any questions that come in live. Um, once the webinar is over, we will be sending it out um, as a recording to anybody who didn't get a chance to stay for the entire webinar, um, as well as um, have it be shared to anyone else that may have additional questions. Um, you can follow up with us. Um, there's a slide after uh, the very last slide um, offers our website information and our contact information. Um, and um, we are available to continue to chat after the webinar as well. So I would like to start by introducing um, Jason and Josh. They Hello. are. Um... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Jason is the president of Mosaic Data Services and Josh is the director of operations. So the, um, we have been working remotely since 2011 and we'll tell you a little bit more about our background and who we are and what we've been doing. Um, there are some poll questions that should be coming up. Um, just to give us a better idea of what your biggest struggle is right now, um, either what type of services or what type of um, tools you feel would be most beneficial to you at this time. Um, and so, Jason, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about your background. Sure. Well, thanks, Tanya, for hosting this. I know we put this together on pretty short notice. So um, thank you for all that you've done to get us to this point. That's fantastic. Very excited to be doing this. This is our first uh, webinar of this type, so um, so forgive us if we're a little bit rough around the edges. Um, I know for me, it's you know speaking about things like this is is pretty natural, but in this format is new, so hopefully it'll go well and smoothly. Um, Mosaic has been around for a long time. We I started this business in 2000. We you know initially were doing internet services for hotels believe it or not when back when we had to pay for internet service if we stayed overnight in a hotel room and that business evolved over the years into a more traditional managed services company where we were providing desktop support and in a variety of services email website development and other things and then in 2011 it, it sort of has taken its present form or it took its present form um, of Mosaic Data Services, which is essentially a cloud-based um, managed services business. Everything that we do has something to do with the data center, uh, which in my mind is the equivalent of the cloud. There are different, you know, types of cloud when you talk about cloud, but but effectively the data center, a data center, whether it's something that we run and control ourselves or, or somebody else does, that's really where the cloud is. And, um, and so we've been doing that very effectively. And at the same time in 2011, when we made this transition to cloud services, we also made a, a decision that we would virtualize our office at the same time, because, you know, in order to, you know, we wanted to sort of practice what we preach. So it was important that uh, we not only um, help people with this, but that we were sort of, you know, doing it for ourselves as well. So. In 2011, we made the transition by design to a fully virtualized situation. Um, all of our infrastructure was moved to the data center where we had quite a bit of our infrastructure anyway, but now it was 100% there. And we, and we have five different data centers around the area. Fortunately, this area is considered May East, which is a big internet hub, as opposed to May West, which is out in on the West Coast. So we're lucky to have such a great um, presence in this area of internet service and otherwise, um, so that we, even in 2011, which seems like light years ago, um, we were able to effectively move into the data center without too much of a challenge to our productivity uh, or efficiency, um, and then grow with the different services that have evolved over the years, and a lot of those that we'll talk about today, to keep our business working efficiently um, over that 
you know, the last nine or 10 years now, as it turns out. So Mosaic has been doing this, preaching, both preaching it and living it for the better part of the last 10 years. And, and as you can imagine, like anything with technology, the, the sophistication of the platforms that we use and we depend on has just, you know, grown tremendously exponentially really. Um, and now as the result of what we're facing with coronavirus, it's even, you know, it's even ignited that further. So I can only imagine from this point forward that it's just going to be an even faster evolution toward a, you know, a, an office free, uh, you know, workplace um, where there is no need anymore to go to a cubicle and do your work that you'll be able to function just as effectively and productively um, at, at home or in your home office as you would if you had to drive, make the, the commute. So, um, so that's where Mosaic kind of, that's what we're doing. That's how it kind of came to be. And hopefully uh, this webinar will shed some light on some of the tools and other things that we use to get, that we have used and do use uh, to get there. Mm -hmm. Jason, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, sure. Josh, would you mind um, spending just a moment, just talk a little bit about your background and, um, and the orchestra perspective? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, yeah, I joined uh, Mosaic in 2016, um, <clears throat> and uh, you know my role has grown here to the point where I'm now sort of overseeing all of our operational side of things. You know, keeping keeping the trains running, as it were, uh, mm -hmm. on time most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we you know in partnership with our developers, our engineers, and our clients, you know, my role, uh, especially lately, has been looking at, you know, not just the technologies that we use and rely on every day for our virtual office, but looking at what, you know, what's on the horizon and, and what's, what's upcoming, what's going to make things better. Um, you know, testing out those new technologies and, and, how we can implement them for ourselves and for our clients uh, to be more productive to, and especially now to not have to go into the office. You know, what can I, what can be done to facilitate and, and ease that transition away from the commute and the nine to five to where you're working from home. Uh, but you can still be, just as productive, if not more productive, than you were when you were working from the office. Yeah. Um, That's a good point. I think you can oftentimes be more productive. I mean, there's some challenges there, but it's certainly possible. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I you know, keep, keep the servers running and uh, keep, you know, keep making those improvements, uh, both to our own infrastructure um, as well as, you know, seeing what's out there and, and just exploring uh, new tools and, you know, platforms, platforms and, and seeing what we can do to make other people's lives easier. Uh, mm -hmm. That's right. You know. So one of the challenges of putting together this webinar was the um, multiple audiences that we're speaking to. So some of the information that we have um, a, it speaks to an audience for that has just begun working from home. Some of the information speaks to an audience that has been working from home from, for longer or um, runs a business and they have contractors or people that are currently working from home. So if we don't answer all of your questions as part of um, the information that we're going to be providing, please do ask the question during. We will answer it afterwards. And we are also looking for topics for future webinars. We plan to host one a week. So if, um, if you have a question that can be addressed in a larger format where we will um, create an, a visual for you to actually work with and see, please let us know and we're happy to uh, create a webinar around another topic. Yep. So um, a week, wow. 
<laughs> Once a week. That's ambitious. <laughs> that's, my, that is my, that's my, that's my goal. That's my there goal. Don't go. worry. Don't worry. We'll have, we'll have other guests. We'll have, we'll have other guests. Um, we've had, well, what we're trying to do, we, we have a number of different partners that, um, that we've been speaking to um, that have other ways that they support um, people that are working from home, whether it's understanding how to better work with their kids and get their kids situated if that's an issue or um, something that's less technical or something from an emotional standpoint where you're, tr you're basically just trying to keep everything together. So we brought together some of the resources as part of this webinar, but I do um, plan to have other guests moving forward that will be able to address some of the other concerns that are less technical in a working from home environment. So for today, um, we're, we'll talk a little bit about the working from home versus the virtual office, um, I, common transition challenges, um, the different types of technology and tools that you have available to you. Obviously, we can't cover all of them here today, but we've covered a few that really make a difference in the way that we work. Um, some strategies for transitioning and best practices. We we really believe in best practices um, for everything that we do. Everything that we bring to the table is um, the foundation is a best practice. So by following the um, work from home best practices, the transition um, should be much simpler, um, easier to process. Um, and then we'll move into um, uh, some of the submitted questions and the live Q&A. Um, I do anticipate that we'll probably go the full 75 hours, but if we move the material a little bit sooner and then we'll have more time for the Q&A at the end. Um, so Jason or Josh, was there anything that you wanted to touch on before we get started? No, I think oh. it's time to dive in. Yeah, dive in. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay, so some of the challenges that we face in transitioning to a work from home environment, we've listed them here. Um, I think um, I won't go down the entire list. I think some of the ones that we all face just in general are the reliable internet connectivity, distractions um, of your home, whether it's your partner or um, your kids, your grandkids. Um, the finding a good work-life balance, these are, these are all things that play into the best practices of working from home. But when we move into the technical difficulties, you know, the technical difficulties where a lot of us really struggle to understand first, what are the right programs to be using, how to get those programs connected effectively, and then once we have everything, how to test it, make sure it is working right, and then get used to it. So just the, the practice of constantly using it. Um, I spent a lot of time um, over the years, as I'm sure Jason and Josh have done, testing everything. Everything that came out, every new technology that came out was bright and shiny. Every new program that came out, I wanted to see how it worked and what it did. Um, and I think that like, we have um, a range of truly exceptional solutions um, that will hopefully be able to support you during this process. That's right. Yeah, there's no silver bullet. There's no one product does all, unfortunately. I wish there was. And eventually there probably will be one or two that do the majority. But right now there's no silver bullet for that. Mm hmm not yet. And, you know, and if there were an all-in-one um, solution, you know, it, it's not a solution for everybody. Every all-in-one I think that I've ever seen, it's always been lacking something. So finding yeah. the right combination of tools is usually what's going to support best, I think, in my, um, in my opinion. That's right. Um, but um, did you want to start sure. just um, since yeah. we're diving into the technical side of things? Yeah. So I think the first thing that's important is to understand who you are in this. Uh, because there are people who simply need to have remote access, and you touched on this a little bit, um, where, you know, your your work is at the office, but there are occasions like right now where you're forced to work from home, whether you're sick or someone else is sick and you need to take care of them. And while your office is still your office, there needs to be a bridge between your home and your and your workstation at, at the office. And this we consider to be remote access, the ability to remotely access your workstation uh, when, the, when the need arises as the result of, you know, something like coronavirus or you get sick or whatever. And there are tools 
specifically designed to make that trend that possible and inefficient um, and we can talk about those and then there's the work from home where now it's a little you've taken it a step further where you're not just accessing your office you're actually moving your office away from the office and a lot of you know people who are telecommuting um, will be do that will do this where they may start with a you know two days in the office and three days at home or some combination of that um, or moving exclusively to home you know working almost as a freelancer or, or you know a teleworker entirely um, and then the third is where the whole office <laughs> virtualizes itself which is sort of the situation we're in here at mosaic we don't have an office building so um, we've had to move all of our infrastructure to the cloud which is effectively the data center and then allow our staff to access uh, those tools uh, remotely from where they from wherever they happen to be and we have folks that we work with who are both um, in the Washington DC area you know the region and the country and even in Europe in some cases so um, the neat thing about it is that you can pretty much work from wherever you happen to be sitting. The the deal breaker and, and probably the most important piece of the puzzle is your internet connection. It, it, without a reliable high speed internet connection, none of this is possible. So before you do anything, you need to make sure that you're in a situation where you can connect effectively to the internet in a way that's going to allow you to stream video and uh, make phone calls and do all of the things that you're going to need to do as the result of working from home. So step one, if you don't haven't already or you don't already know, make sure that you have a reliable internet connection. It's basically the key to the whole puzzle. Beyond that then, we're talking about, you know, challenges of, you know, proximity or, or um, you know where you're sitting things like that so and we can go through a lot of those whether um, you know you're the only one that's working remotely are you connecting with everyone else um, the tools that you're using for that um, like Tanya said the, the finding a good life work balance I know for myself I find that I'm always working it never you know unless I put it down and walk away it's, it's sometimes you know it's nine o'clock at night and I don't even realize it and I'm still working or you know you're up early and you know what used to be an eight hour day is now a 12 hour day so it's good to find you know and set schedule you know and and sort of live to that um, the other big thing uh, with working remotely is is securing your work environment making sure that the kids uh, you know don't somehow get into your laptop or your workstation and and download a game or whatever it is that they may be doing and and, and, and sort of interfere with with what you're doing for work um, setting a you know a dedicated space for that all of these things are going to be challenges that get presented when you're making that initial transition but the biggest thing is understanding what exactly you're trying to accomplish? Am I just going to be remote access? Am I trying to virtualize my, you know, work from home or virtualize my office entirely? Thank you. Thank you for that, Jason. I, I think that outside of the technology, that's been my biggest struggle personally has been also taking, taking a step back. And I, I think that that's something that was not discussed prior to, uh, Prior to the work from home transition, it's not something you really think about because you're in your home environment, so you have no problem. It's right in front of you. You can pick it up anytime you need to, but the, the sh there's a shift there when you need to versus when you want to, um, I think, and you end up working more than, more than you would if your home was just your, um, your off, quote unquote, off environment. That's right. Um, and, it's and like I said, it's important. To, to know what you're getting yourself into because and even when you buy I mean people when they're buying their homes now you know I remember when I moved into the house I'm currently in I didn't ask I didn't even think and this was back in 2000 but I didn't ask about internet connection until I had already made the commitment to buy the house only to realize that the internet connection that I needed didn't exist and so I had to figure it out but um, I mean mm -hmm. it's almost you know, you know gosh you know, even when you're looking at purchasing a home it's becoming a big question but the challenges today are much different than the challenges were 10 or 20 years ago so it's much more so, um, 
common to have high speed internet now than it used to be. Um, we have a great um, comment from Chris um, who said that they found it helpful to con um, to contact the um, the ISP provider to receive uh, receive a list of best supported routers. Oh, so, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, most of the internet right. service providers will give you the router that makes sense for the service package that you're going to have. Um, you know that's something that they'll dictate but one thing that you can do as a small you know if depending on your situation is consider residential service versus business class service there's a big difference especially in price but the internet service providers like comcast and verizon for example will guarantee a higher level of service for a business class connection than they would for residential they will also um, they will also give you priority or precedence in the service that is coming to your home office. So, for example, if you live in a in a in a very crowded community, or you know, 100, 200 or more homes in your community, and you notice that every night at seven o'clock, all of a sudden your your speed drops by 50 percent because everybody's home doing whatever they're doing. If you transition to business class service, you'll get precedence in over the rest of those folks that may be sharing the same pipe. Um, so it's important to talk to your provider, not only about the router, as Chris mentioned, um, to make sure that you're getting, you're maximizing the, the speed with which you can connect, but also the quality of service to make sure that, you know, you're in the business class versus the residential class and they're in there when people are using it, especially now where everybody's home all the time, every day, you're going to have some priority. Uh, versus the other folks as a result of everybody being on at the same time. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good to know. I never thought about that. Um, yeah. That's really good to know. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next slide here where we talk a little bit about, um, about the anatomy of what the remote office looks like. So some of these some of these pieces may be total common sense, of course, multiple monitors or dedicated workspace, but some of the others um, that we'll talk through, we'll start talking through the programs and the tools that we're using um, will hopefully provide some of the information that's needed. Yeah, Go so, ahead, Josh. Yeah, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, so um, as Jason talked about, um, high speed internet, of course, is very important to have. Uh, the dedicated workspace, um, this is a piece that gets overlooked a lot, um, especially when you're uh, just doing it on a temporary basis or, or you're brand new to the working from home environment where, you know, making sure that you have a space that is your workspace. It's not part of your home life. Um, you're not going to be inundated with you know, distractions of home life, especially right now when the kids are home and you're, you know, you know, your other people who live there live with you may be home at the same time. You know, having that dedicated space where you can just focus on the work you need to do and that's it. Um, is it it's it's helpful for that mindset, you know, that uh, that work life balance as well, where, okay, I'm in my office space, I'm doing office work and that's it. I leave this space and I've left the office, right? Um, versus, you know, okay, I need to work from home. I'm going to take my laptop and go sit on the bed and I'm going to let the dog come in whenever the dog wants to. Uh, and the kids can come and go and my, my partner can come and go. And, um, you know, that is not, you're setting yourself up for failure, um, by not dedicating that workspace, you know, what you can. Um, yeah. And that becomes, I just to interject, that becomes more important in my mind when you're transitioning to a work from home versus remote access. I mean, maybe you can get away with it if you're remote accessing for a day or two, but certainly once you make the transition to a work from home, you, you need to have that dedicated space for sure. Yeah. And then once you've, got your space, uh, make sure you have what you need. Um, so having a desk that's at the right height and size for the amount of work you're going to be doing. Um, have a good chair. Uh, you don't, you know, especially if you're in a situation where you're used to the office providing chairs and they, 
you know, you need a new chair and someone from facilities comes by with a new chair. And they're all great and they, they support you for the eight hours you're, you're going to be in it. When you're at home, your back is still your back, right? Your back and your legs and your neck still need that support. And that does not change regardless of where you are. So make sure, I cannot stress enough the importance of having, spending the extra money on a good chair um, that will keep you supported keep your back from hurting because if your back goes out, you, you're not going to be productive. Right. It's like a good uh, mattress, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's worth the, the, a couple extra bucks. Um, you know, you get it back a thousand fold um, by not having back pain every single day. Um, proper lighting, you don't, especially if you're in a situation where that workspace is going to be your basement or a back room with, you know, very little window uh, space or, or, you know, doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight, um, just to keep your, your mental sanity, you know, offices are typically very well lit. Uh, you know, lots of overhead lighting, big windows, you know, lots of natural light, artificial light, um, you know, make sure that you're getting that light. It, it's, it's strain on the eyes and it's strain on the mind. Um, if you're sort of in a cave, uh, where, you know, the only light is, you know, one tiny little desk lamp and your computer screen you're going to get headaches and it's just not good for your mental health uh, to not have that light. Um, your equipment now, of course, you need to have uh, the, the right devices to do what you need to do. Um, if your only piece of equipment that you have is your cell phone, that might not do it when you know, you're used to having a full computer. Um, so, you know, you have to sort of evaluate the needs of, you know, what am I going to be doing? Is this a remote access situation where I just need a, a little terminal that's going to connect me to my office network and I'm going to, all the computing and, and heavy lifting is going to be done on the office side? Or do I need something, you know, bigger and more full featured? Again, like any, like the chair, like anything else, you get out what you put into it. Um, you know, a, a little extra money up front can save you a lot of headaches down the road. Uh, can make it just a better, work environment for yourself, long-term uh, and short-term. Um, one thing that uh, having multiple monitors, you know, a lot of offices, you get that at the office, but you don't have it at home. Um, you know, find, find a, a second monitor that's the, the right size for you, hook it up. Most computers, this is, you know, these days it's no problem to, to get that set up. Um, I know for me, making the switch from one monitor to two was like the, the heavens parting. And then when yeah. I switch, when I upgraded to three, I said, how did I ever live with two? Two. Right? And once um, you do it, you won't go back. You won't go back. No, um, you'll only get bigger. <laughs> uh, now to be fair, I am a, I am a, uh, uh, an, you know, in addition to my daily duties, I'm an engineer and a programmer. So for me having tons of information right at my fingertips um, is, is the way I work best. Um, you know, but, you know, make, you know, strike that balance for yourself. How much do you, how, how much can you have? How much do you need to have? Yeah. Um, you know, and how much space do you have? I would be curious about that as a poll question, Tanya, maybe it's too late for that now, but how many people actually use multiple monitors? I would think at this point, everyone uses multiple monitors, but you know, maybe one, maybe two, but like Josh and I, I have three and I know guys that mm -hmm. work with six. I mean, it's, crazy but it but you'd be surprised because you have one screen dedicated to email one screen sort of your primary workspace one screen dedicated to your communications i in my opinion the having multiple monitors is the single biggest um thing you can do to increase your productivity in a remote office situation by by mm -hmm. well next to your internet service i suppose but um but certainly one of the top three for sure yeah um, and then, uh, yeah, so for, for that connectivity, um, especially when you're making that move away from the face-to-face -face communications, um, you know, if you're in a line of business where, uh, folks seeing your face is important, uh, you know, you want to maintain as much of that face-to-face -face connection as you can, um, get a good webcam. Um, most laptops have a webcam built into them. 
uh, the quality can vary significantly uh, and you're sort of stuck in terms of the angle at which people are viewing you. Uh, if you get that uh, aftermarket webcam uh, that works with a, a desktop computer or a laptop computer that you can sort of move it around, you can get the best angle. Um, and easily may, disconnect and, it. And easily disconnect it for those times when you don't want it on. Um, same thing with the, uh, the headset. Um, you know, get a good quality headset. Get something comfortable. Um, if you're like me, um, I, I have a big head. Um, you know, not just, not just figuratively speaking, but I have physically a very large head. So I had to be very selective in the headset that I bought um, to make sure, you know, because there are days where I wear this headset for six hours. You know, I'll be on the phone. I'll be making calls, taking calls, doing meetings, um, you know, working with my team, working with clients, and I'll have this thing on for hours on end, make sure it's comfortable, make sure your sound quality is good, um, and again, make sure you can unplug it so that, or, um, and particularly if you are uh, going to be doing a lot more uh, remote talking, um, some, a lot of headsets now will have a way to mute the headset uh, directly. You know, mine has a mute button. I don't have to do anything on my computer. I just, it's a physical button. I can hit it and boom, I'm muted. Nobody has to hear me drinking or, <laughs> or, or coughing. You no, know, that's right. And that's a, you, I think we could do a webinar on meeting <laughs> etiquette. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there's so many little picadillos about what you're doing, what, you know, background noise, dogs barking, drinking, you know, little things. I mean, I've seen some crazy, I don't know if anybody's been out surfing YouTube, but there have been some crazy uh, videos, clips put on the, on the uh, internet now for people working from home on, on Zoom, for example, and they don't realize or they don't remember that they're on video and they're, you know, walking around in their underwear, or, you know, picking their nose, God knows what. So it, meeting etiquette could definitely be <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 leave the in depth, we'll leave the in-depth conversation of that right. for another topic. I will just leave it. Um, right. uh, having spent many years now uh, doing all these meetings remotely, um, the sound of someone drinking coming through my headset, yeah. um, if I never heard that again, I would, I would be happy. Um, yep. So, and... Guilty uh, as charged. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, don't, don't be that person. Um, you know, do, do your, do your team a favor and, and don't drink right in their ear. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, but moving on to the technologies here, um, we've got some of the, the lovely logos here for, uh, tech that we use, we love. Um, and I think, I think we should just dive in, uh, to the specifics here. Um, you know, when it, when it, you know, there are certain tools that you may already be using, um, that, you know, you're using in the office in, you know, tradition, you know, in a traditional office, um, that the setup and the reliability of those tools becomes even more important because, you know, if you're used to talking on Slack, but you know, Slack's down or, you know, you're not at your computer, you can walk down the hall and, and say hi to that person. Well, now you can't walk down the hall. That person isn't there anymore, right? The hall isn't there anymore. So you, you have to trust your technology. Um, so Zoom obviously is, is one that we're, we're big fans of, uh, which is, it's what we're on right now. Um, you know, very simple to set up. Um, very, you know, there, the use has exploded here. So both, uh, the, the blooper reels as it were that are on YouTube are out there to see how people are doing it wrong, uh, but also tutorials on how to do it right. Um, but it's, it's a very straightforward system to use. You connect, uh, you've got your, your audio, your video, you can phone in, you can use a mic, uh, you know, whatever your best quality is. Um, and, uh, like we said here, you know, it's, and this, this is sort of both meeting etiquette and, and the work from home situation where, well, now if you're not having that meeting where everyone can see what you're doing, right, you're sitting around a conference table and, you know, you can see if, uh, if your intern is playing, playing on their phone. Um, 
you know, when you're, when you're remote, you can't see that. So making that conscious choice and, and it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a subconscious thing, right? The, the meeting starts to drift into a direction that, you know, you're maybe not as engaged in, um, you know, and your email's still dinging on the other screen. Uh, you know, that, that inclination to start answering those emails, you know, make just as you're making work time, work time, make meeting time, meeting time, right? You're, you're going to say, okay, I'm not going to answer those emails until the con the meeting is done. Just close and it all outright. Close it out or, or minimize it, turn off, you know, turn it off. However you can turn it off. Um, and you know, why do I feel like you're meeting. talking to me? <laughs> um, I'm talking to me as much as I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, <Right. laughs> Yeah. Um, and then again, that, attention. Yeah, you can yeah. tell when somebody splits their attention. It's pretty clear or pretty yeah. obvious. Yeah. Um, and that's again where that mute button becomes uh, uh, comes into play. Um, you know, if you're if you are, if you are going to disengage partially, you know, make sure you're not creating a distraction for the others in 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 your meeting. Um, you know, and the environment. You know, you don't want that background noise. Uh, you don't, you know, things sound different on a microphone than they do on the, on a regular phone call. So if you're using that headset, you know, spend some time testing it out with one of your colleagues yeah. and see, okay, how much ambient noise is actually coming through my mic? If it turns out you've got a really, really sensitive microphone and the dog barking at the you can hear them from the other end of the house where you can't hear it on a cell phone, you know, turn your mic sensitivity down. Right. Um, but you're not necessarily going to know that unless you take a little bit of time, just test it out with a colleague, see how it works. Um, and I think by default, in my opinion, you know, video, the, in a, you know, having video on is a, is a, it, 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 no meeting should start with video on. It should be a specifically discussed thing in my mind audio and screen sharing are the sort of the common things that should be happening in any conference of any kind. And then the video becomes secondary and if it's necessary, otherwise, you know, in my opinion, it should be off as much as, it, you know, almost always. I don't know that there's any reason to have video if you can share a screen. So my two cents on that. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, your productivity software obviously is next. Um, you know, I think at this point, everyone knows the office suite, uh, word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, and outlook, you know, th those are you know, not new and they're not going anywhere. Um, so they're really cloud-based now. So I mean, there's no excuse really. And they are all cloud-based. So there are online versions of the applications, um, and most licensing plans nowadays, uh, you, by design, you can install on multiple computers. So you can have it on your work computer, you can have it on your home computer, um, you can have it on your laptop, you can have it on your tablet, um, all with the same license. You know, but making sure, again, taking that time, making sure everything works, um, that you've got it installed properly, the license is at, properly activated, uh, you can get to your documents, you can, you can connect, um, and and keep working, you know, when if you can't access one particular piece of hardware, um, the important thing is, can you access your data? Um, yeah, Microsoft is really, I mean, I mean, certainly there are other technologies in the world, Google and, and such, Amazon, but I mean, Microsoft has done so much to facilitate the, you know, the remote office, the work from home virtual office environment, as much as any other company, if not more, you could probably argue, uh, you know, Google is certainly up there too. But um, I mean, without Office 365 and that platform, and now Teams is coming along, which we'll talk about. I mean, without those two things, it's, it's virtually impossible to be efficient or productive from home beyond the meeting. So Teams is a huge piece of it. I mean, it's getting bigger. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, Teams, um, Teams is a platform that Microsoft has been rolling out over the last, uh, real, really they've been ramping it up over the last year uh, in a big way. Um, and it's, uh, you know, when you talk about silver bullet applications, um, they're getting close. You know, it's, it's still a work in progress. It's still... Um, you know, they're, the edges. Yeah, they're, yeah, but the edges are getting less rough and they're, and they're getting fewer and far between. 
um, you know, it's, it's a, as an integrated platform where you have live communication, um, you've got connection to file storage in the form of SharePoint, um, you know, one button syncing for OneDrive for business. Um, you can have emails get sent to a, you know, to a particular channel. So, you know, someone sends you an email, you need to share it with a team Well, you can just forward it to the channel. And then it's part of your, your communications history. Um, you can, you know, it integrates natively with your calendar. Uh, you know, it's, it's really coming along quite well. Um, as a, as a sort of single, you know, teams plus outlook becomes, you know, your, your, your hub for communicate for, is sort of day-to-day -day communications. Um, the other big one that we use is Slack um, for your uh, interoffice. Yeah, for 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 your live communication. Um, if you're uh, not a Microsoft client and and or or don't want to be a Microsoft client, uh, or Teams doesn't do what you want to do for whatever reason, um, Slack is it has been the gold standard for years. I think Slack and Teams are sort of competing with one another uh, pretty directly now. Uh, right. But Slack just, it makes it very easy to stay connected um, to your team. Uh, you know, you can set up those notification times and preferences. So, you know, okay, at 6 p.m. I'm going to stop getting alerts on my phone. Um, you know, when I... When it, you know, when it's time to, to stop working. Right. Um, yeah, it's fantastic because you can thread things. I mean, you can keep things so organized. It's, yeah, it, Slack is, is a huge tool in the remote office for sure, virtual office. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, Jason, if you want to talk about Acuity, because I know you're- I'll let you've Tanya been... take that one. She's the most familiar with that. Tanya, talk about, I mean, you've, you introduced me to this and cause I never really used it and I frankly still don't use it as much as I should be, but tell us about it. So Acuity Scheduler is absolutely amazing. Um, there are so many schedulers out there. Um, the majority of them are low or no cost, but not many of them are as comprehensive as Acuity. Um, when you first get started with it, you have the option of attaching multiple calendars. So if you keep appointments, personal appointments on one calendar and you keep work appointments, business appointments on another calendar, it can take both of them and then account for these appointments when it comes to people um, using it to create an appointment with you. So if you have a client that you're trying to set up an appointment with, rather than going back and forth through email, are you available at three, are you available at four, by providing a link to your calendar, and you can have multiple calendars as needed, they can choose the time that's best for them based on the availability that you have already set. So you can control every aspect of what your calendar looks like. And the next, the, the next step for this, the next level for this is the ability to accept payments. So if, some, if you have a class or an event, something that has a specific starting time, you can integrate it into your website or provide it as a standalone link. Um, the, um, your potential client will click on the link, will register for the class, um, using a form that you create. So they have basic, um, your name, your email, but you can create um, custom items that you ask when somebody is first registering, which is really helpful. Um, they'll register and then before they can actually complete the registration process, then any payment that you have assigned to that particular class um, is is paid so you can integrate different different types of payment options so it's a really comprehensive uh, scheduler you can sign up for free there's a free trial um, it takes a little bit to get it set up at the beginning just to make sure that everything is working correctly but once you get it set up it's amazing what you can do with it and keeping that calendar organized nowadays is you know so much more important you know you know if you compare to the you know traditional nine to five life where it's like, okay, from nine to five, I'm always at work, right? So I'm going to have work meetings during that time period, but none of my personal 
meetings are going to be be involved in that. There's going to be little to no overlap between the personal calendar and the work calendar. Um, and for both, um, you know, for yourselves and, you know, considering your clientele as well, well, you're not the only ones working from home now. You know, your clients are working from home, so their availability is going to be changed. And so the more you can sort of work within that and keep your own calendar open, but not create those conflicts, you know, Acuity is a tool that really makes that that possible for you to keep everything organized, right? So you don't, you're not saying, oh yeah, I'm going to run, you know, run to the, you know, to this uh, appointment for my kid. Oh wait, that's at the same time as, as a, as you know the this important meeting mm-hmm. right um exactly and just to just to interject so when it comes to when it when it comes to appointments if you were to say i have appointments set up in my calendar every 30 minutes for the next four hours. If um, you were to have a scheduling conflict, it will automatically remove those conflicts um, from, or that availability from the calendar. So if somebody's scheduling, it'll be scheduled around your availability instead of having it conflict. Yeah, so now, and those are, I mean, these are, these are good tools no matter what your environment is, whether you're talking about the remote access, the the work from home, or the virtual office. Um, you know, the, these are tools that sort of across the board are gonna are gonna help. Um, you know, now we're sort of getting into tools that are more, uh, you know, more more tailored. You know, more tailored use. Um, there's a program called Screen Connect that we are we've been using for many many years uh, for remote connections, um, but especially now where you know, all of a sudden you can't get to your work computer and you have no time to set up a virtual office, right? You need to keep working while the virtual office is being built out. Um, Screen Connect is a, is a great program uh, that you can use to connect to your office computer as if you were sitting there in the office. You don't have to spend the time rebuilding the firewalls and, and networking. It, it, runs over the same sort of channels as secure web traffic. Um, so it, it's real easy to set up. Um, and then, you know, while you're building out your virtual office or your work from home solution, you can keep yourself connected um, to that, to those office, you know, the, the resources that are, that are still physically in the office. And there's a lot of flavors of that. Screen to connect is one flavor of the remote access, you know, suite of software there you know there's team viewer and, and remote desktop connection that microsoft has and screen connect and so there you it may this thing may come in a lot of different um flavors or, or shapes and sizes it, it just depends on how you're connecting to your office really that drives that and to some degree preference so that's for sure all right so uh, <clears throat> yeah, now we we want to you know move to the virtual office to the virtual office, and this is more sort of what you know our model is, which is you know really uh, taking data, take, data center centric, right? Yeah, taking your operations and moving it away from the individual computer uh, and moving it into the data center. Well, out uh, of the server closet, right? Out of the, out of, out of the, out of the server closet and right. into the data center. Correct. Um, or the cloud at large. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there are, you know, as many ways to set this up as there are offices. Um, <laughs> you know, really what, what matters is, you know, finding the solution for your team. What is going to keep you and your team connected to your data, connected to your clients? Um, you know, some of the best practices, you know, you want to make sure your data is redundant. Are you backing up your, your data? Um, do you have a, you know, if the server catches on fire or, or stops being available, how are you going to get to your data? How are you going to recover that data? Um, so that piece of it, you know, whether you're on-prem, you know, in the office or you're, you're fully remote, fully virtualized, um, you know, it is something to, to take into consideration uh, as a long-term solution. But that, 
you know, when you're looking at a virtual connection, that's part of the infrastructure is, okay, well, my data is no longer in a server 10 feet away from me. How am I going to get to it in a secure way? Um, VOIP phones. Um, this is another big, big, big challenge that a lot of folks face is, okay, I need to still be able to use my work number right? You know, we've had the same business number for 20 years and folks call that number and it's all over the web, but my phone is no longer accessible to me, right? My, the phone on the desk is staying in the office and I'm not. Um, so one solution that we have is the 3CX uh, provider. Uh, you move that, you know, you move the phone number over to that provider um, and then uh, it becomes virtual, right? You can run your phones from anywhere. Uh, you can still use your desk phone when you're in the office, or you can have an app on your computer, you can have an app on your cell phone, um, which is actually what I do. I, you know, I like to take calls on my phone. So I just have the 3CX app installed on my cell phone, and when someone calls into my work line, it comes up on my cell phone. Someone calls my personal line, comes up on my cell phone in a different way. Uh, and either way I can, I can take calls, uh, and, you know, very easy to say, okay, no longer, you know, I'm leaving the office for the day. I'm no longer available. Uh, send everybody to voicemail. Same as if I was standing up and leaving the, leaving the building. Mm -hmm. Um, and your voicemails can be emailed to you then too. So when the message mm -hmm. is left, it gets emailed to your email box and you can listen to your voicemail right from your email. You don't have to check your voicemail. You just log into your email. Yep. Um, and, and it has a full suite. I mean, you can have auto attendant, call queues, and there's so many different things. You, I mean, it's a full functioning, you know, system, auto, you know, from the auto attendant down and call queues. Um, you can have groups of people that are, will be systematically, you know, if there's a support line or help desk, like we have little ping, you know, Sally first and then Jane second and then Joe third and, it, and it'll cycle through that loop. So there are so many things. And then with the phone numbers, and I wanted to make this point is you can port any phone number you want to what's called a SIP trunk, which effectively moves it from the analog world to the digital world. And then once your phone number has been associated with this SIP trunk, as long as you have access to the internet, you can have your calls routed out of the analog to the digital and then have that basically pointed to whatever voice over IP system you happen to use. 3CX is a flavor of this. There are many flavors that exist in the world. The key is that you have your telephone number ported over to the digital equivalent, and then you can you can effectively uh, connect that with the, the, the PBX, the, the voice over IP system, and then set that up to receive calls and add other numbers and extensions and all kinds of things. Like yeah, and, and the VOIP solutions um, is really one of those areas where, um, you know, it starts as a, as a pain point of, I need my phones available to me outside of the office. And all of a sudden it's like, well, not only am I solving that problem, but I'm, I'm getting 10 more features that I didn't know. I otherwise, right? didn't, didn't know I needed until, until I had them and now I can't live without them. Right. Yeah. Um, like the extra monitor. Right. Um, all right. So why don't we, I know we're, remote we're file storage. Oh yeah. We're, we're getting way over time. Yeah. Um, so remote file storage again, sim, you know, with the data center, there's a lot of different platforms. Um, you know, whether you've got an existing file storage, that's just a computer sitting in the data center. Um, you know, whether you're already in love with SharePoint or Google drive or, or some other solution, um, you know, make sure you have that access as you uh, set up so you don't have to rely on your office connection. Um, and if what you've got isn't going to work in a remote situation, that's when you want to look at uh, migrating that data out or setting up other connection avenues. Um, but again, there are as many flavors of that as there are, as there are offices. Um, the more you can test ahead of kicking everyone out of the building, the better obviously, but you know, there, there are many, many different ways to, to get people connected to their data uh, in a, in a secure way. The office. Yeah. Yeah. 
in a secure way. So we're what, 30 minutes out, Tanya, we're, roughly? Yeah, we're yeah, a little under 30 minutes out. So we'll move through the rest of the slides fairly quickly. Uh, yeah. A lot of the things that we'll cover and that we'll hit, um, some of them are common sense, some of them, you know, we're gonna make sure to send the, the slide deck out. So if you have additional questions once we do, please reach back out to us. Um, so just a couple more minutes as we move through these slides and then we will open it up for live questions, some of which we already have. Um, so uh, just really quick, some other tools. These are tools that um, I know that I personally can't live without. Um, Evernote is one of them. Um, it syncs across all your all your environments as well as your um, as well as can be downloaded directly onto your laptop or desktop. And um, it's really really helpful. It helps to clip um, if you're online and you need to um, basically favorite something or save a clip for later. Really easy to clip using um, using their app. They have a premium, but I haven't had to um, <laughs> haven't had to go that far yet. Um, LastPass, awesome for secure password management, um, especially if you potentially need to share passwords. Um, uh, it's free, easy to use, um, I, and uh, um, the side deck that we send out will have the links to all of these items. Um, awesome screenshots. So when you have multiple monitors, if you try to screenshot using your computer, quite often you'll get a screenshot that has all of your monitors, not just the one that you're going for. So um, although with the premium version of Awesome Screenshot, you can also screenshot your desktop. Um, if it's not something that you need, this is totally free, can be downloaded really easily. It's just a web extension and it allows you to take uh, screenshots quickly and easily and then send them out. Um, Grammarly, um, I think whether you're in office or in a home office, Grammarly is absolutely essential because um, it catches grammar mistakes. They, um, spelling mistakes in email um, across all different types of devices and platforms. So this is an um, ex excellent extension to use. Um, Pocket, there are a lot of different apps that are like Pocket. Um, so if you have a favorite, I'm not suggesting you switch, but essentially if you're reading an article or something online and you want to save it later for um, uh, to read, um, Pocket is great. You can save content from just about anywhere. Um, Chrometa, Chrometa is, is great. One of the things that I've always struggled with is keeping track of my own time just because I'm jumping around between so many different things during the day that I don't always have that extra second to take a breath, start my time for the next task. So Chrometa is something that you download onto your computer. It keeps during work hours. It keeps track of um, everything within reason. You can you can adjust the settings, uh, what you're doing on your on your computer, so that you know how much time you spent on your email. You know how much time you spent on social media. You know how much time you're spending, and you can actually set it up to where this time is tracked towards different projects. So if you have different projects that you're working on, and you don't want to have to stop to track your time, Chrometa is an excellent tool. Um, I'll talk for just one more moment about my Co-Design Studio. So when you first go um, to the site, it's a little misleading because it specifically talks about um, changing your job, career management, knowing, uh, allowing you to design your own career. Um, but I have found it tremendously helpful to help me better understand what I'm naturally good at. When you separate from the rest of your team and you're working in your own home office, sometimes you're trying to take on tasks or you're trying to fill a role that isn't the best role for you and it can cause um, additional stress as you're trying to um, as you're trying to manage or figure out what your next steps are. Um, there are a lot of tools within this program that allows you to um, that you can leverage in order to learn how to set priorities, stay balanced. Um, there's a really great assistant in there that lets you like refocus if you're feeling overwhelmed. So, I mean, it has a seven day free trial. It's definitely worth taking advantage of the seven days. Um, a lot you can get done in seven days. And then the next two slides that we'll cover are just going to talk about best practices. One of the best practices and recommendations are to listen to something in the background, whether it's TV, white noise, music, podcast, TED Talk, something to keep you focused. So when we send this out, provided a few resources for you. 
Um, as we're moving forward into the next slides, um, if you do have additional questions that we can an that we can answer for you, I know that I have a couple of questions um, as well. Please feel free to add them into the Q and A now, and then we'll cover them in just a couple of minutes. And I'm sorry, Jason, did you want to say something? No, nope, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to say we'll we'll try and get through these pretty fast, so we have time fairly to quickly. Talk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Jason or Josh, did you want to? Did you want to? I'll these? take this one and I'll let Josh take the next one. So, you know, there there are certain strategies you can apply, you know, apply to you know to a work from home environment. Um, most of them, like Tani said, are common sense. Obviously, you want to get started early. Try and maintain the same sort of schedule that you would have if you were going to the office. In fact, pretend like you're going to the office. Um, plan out what you're going to be doing ahead of time so that you're efficiently handling that in the throughout in the course of your day. Um, shouldn't you know? Shouldn't be much different than what it would be if you were in you know the actual office or if you're in your home office. Same thing applies. Keeping organized. Um, creating a dedicated workspace. We talked a little bit about that. Very, very important to have a dedicated workspace and letting the people around you know um, that this is your dedicated workspace. And, you know, like the on air when, you know, when you're on the air, like be quiet, stay away. I'm on air, you know, that sort of mentality uh, when I'm working, uh, keep the kids away, you know, stay away. I'm, I'm doing my thing. Um, uh, working outside the office, uh, you know, uh, I don't personally find working outside the office to be advantageous at all, but I know a lot of people that do. So I thought it was good to add that um, just if nothing else for a change of scenery, you know, working from a coffee shop, working from, you know, a quiet park. If, if there's, you know, assuming there's internet connection, it's mainly, you know, that strategy would be to just sort of mix it up and you're not always, you know, stuck in your cave. Um, planning to work when you're at your most productive. For me, I'm a night person, not as opposed to a, a more, you know, an early bird. Um, so my schedule tends to work, you know, work more in the evening hours. That's when I feel like I'm the most productive. But I know there are other people that are just the opposite. The key is to try not to end up working 12 hours a day. That I mean, that's the most important thing. Um, I think it's a good idea to save calls and meetings for later in the day so that you're more, you know, on your game. Um, taking, you know, again, you could probably argue this a lot of different ways, but for me personally, I like to get into the office, get my head together, sort of get organized, and then start taking calls once I've had that time to sort of let the dust settle for, for the day, get emails, you know, under control, things like that, and then start taking meetings. Um, and then pushing something into the background to focus, yeah, so that goes to what Tani was just talking about, where, um, you know, I oftentimes will have you know, CNBC or, you know, some random news channel on because it doesn't really engage me. It's just kind of white noise almost. Um, music uh, is a good thing. It should always be at a low volume though um, so that it's not distracting for sure. And then, yeah, when you're talking about, <clears throat> especially nowadays, you know, new, new environments, new work from home environments and, uh, if you're already a work from homer, if others are going to be in your home that didn't used to be, um, communication. Uh, talk to the other folks who are who are going to be in your environment and say, okay, I need these hours to be my work time. I need to not have any distractions. These hours I'm a little flexible, and these are the hours I'm going to be stopping working. Um, you know, and and talk to, you know, talk to your your living partners you know, whether they're roommates, spouses, partners, whatever, you know, whoever you're living with, um, and talk to your, to your workmates as well. Uh, because if you're making that transition, then everybody else is too. Um, and you know, you're, you're not, you're not alone in this. Um, you know, you try to keep it as normal as possible, but make allowances for those, those shifts, you know, it, it is a different environment, but it's a different environment for everybody. Um, you know, set and take clear breaks, you know, this is one where I'm definitely talking to myself, um, you know, make sure, you know, you're getting up from your desk on at, at regular intervals, your body needs to move. Um, you know, it you're we are not designed to sit in one spot for eight, nine hours in a row. Um, you know, we're not supposed to focus on one thing for eight or nine hours in a row. Um, so get up, walk around, stretch your body, 
uh, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, stretch your back. Uh, make sure you're staying hydrated. Uh, don't just make, you know, drink coffee all day long. You know, make sure you're drinking water. Um, and don't forget to interact with other humans. Um, you know, you're the, you know, if you, especially if you're used to that commute where you're on the road with a bunch of people or you're on the subway or your bus with lots of people, and then you're in the office with people and then you're, you got your commute home with people and then you've got your family at home. Well, now it's just your family. And for a lot of the day, you're, it's just you. Um, so make sure, especially on those break times after work times that you're talking to other people, talk on the phone to your colleagues, maybe more than you used to, uh, since you're not seeing each other face to face, you're going to have those those communications. Um, meal planning just as important as it was when you're going to the office, um, but you know, don't say to yourself, "Oh, well, I'm home now. I can spend two hours making my lunch, right?" Because I'm I'm at home. Uh, invariably, or not do it at all, <laughs> or not do it at all. Um, mm -hmm. You know. But if you're if you're planning on cooking in the middle of the day, don't plan don't do that because uh, your phone's going to be ringing, your email's going to be dinging, um, you know, and then you're you're going to end up not eating. Um, you know, uh, make it difficult to waste time on social media. Uh, this is important, I think, in any environment. Um, but you know, with without that, you know, you're the only accountability to you a lot of times. So um, those productivity tools that Tanya was talking about. Um, there are other apps that can, you know, product, productivity apps that can make it so, you know, okay, from nine to five, the Facebook app isn't going to work on my phone, right? Um, and then pick a definitive finishing time each day. Um, this is really important. You know, I think like Tony was saying at the very beginning, it's easy to, once your work space and your home space merge, you know, that email comes in at seven o'clock. Well, you see it on your phone, the urge to just, oh, I'm just going to run downstairs real quick and answer this email, right? Well, you know, really consider, you know, whereas before you would say, okay, I'm only going to answer this from my phone if it's an emergency um, and it has to be a really critical emergency. Well, that hasn't changed. Don't let that change just because the barrier to answering that email has gone down. Um, you know, your, your, you need to separate your work life and your personal life um, for your own sanity. Uh, and this is true across any industry, no matter what your environment is. You know, if you're always on the clock, if you're, if you never disengage, um, you know, your work life, your, your home life is going to suffer. Your work life is going to suffer too. Um, you know, we, we are designed to do different things through the day. Our brains are not productive when we stay on task at work all the time. Right. Um, so disengage, let yourself disengage, you know, give yourself permission to disengage. Um, it's, it seems like a silly thing to say, but you know, some, some people need to hear that is, you know, you are the one who has to grant that permission. Um, and it's, it's important to do so. Um, I think people either they're, they're always on or they have a hard time getting turned on. You know what I mean? They get, you're either distracted by everything around you and have a hard time staying, getting on to work and staying with it, or you're in it all the time and you can't turn it off. It's sort of one or the other. So finding the balance is certainly a key for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so um, I hope that it was, <laughs> yeah, the, the last two slides that, that were, it was easier to talk through those than talking through the, the tech side of things. And so, I mean, we'll move right now into the, into the live questions. Um, and then I have a couple of follow-up questions as well. And thank you to everybody who uh, stuck with us through the, through the webinar so far. And um, hopefully we were able to answer your questions. Um, so one question that was posed by several people is um, how to conduct meetings with multiple parties. Um, specific question is um, my, my clients are small cities and towns. I need to conduct meetings so they comply with legal standards for open meetings. So not only do I need to interact with the board members, the general public needs to be able to see what we are doing and ask us questions or provide input. 
All right, well, that sounds like what we're doing here. <laughs> you know, the ability to get on to a, a live chat or, uh, you know, a webinar, you know, using Zoom, for example, as the platform. Um, you can bring in panelists like you have, like we've done here and open it up to the public. So in this scenario, I would imagine the board members would potentially be panelists uh, along with a host and then the public would come in and whether it's a town hall forum or, where you know you're actually interfacing with people direct, you know, where they're not necessarily sitting and just listening. They can speak or whatever. You can do both of those in this platform. So I would say I would say look at Zoom or WebEx for sure. Mm -hmm. And between the two, I would say, at least in my opinion, that Zoom it has been uh, much easier to it's much easier to uh, maneuver through the settings and the way that it works. Um, if you're not used to using programs like this. Yeah, I agree. It's very user friendly, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think both WebEx and Zoom are, it's kind of six and one half dozen of the other. WebEx is certainly comes out of the corporate landscape. Um, and then Zoom, I think was more, you know, end user oriented. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, but certainly, yeah, Zoom has gotten very popular. I mean, all you have to do is look at the stock market. They're the they're the green number in a sea of red <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. so. Um, so the next um, the next question ties into a question that I had. So I know that sometimes I'll communicate with people that still have they still have DSL because of the location where they live or their the quality of their internet in general is just very very low. It's difficult for them to uh, to use tools that like the ones that we're recommending. Mm -hmm. um, for so for, for screen sharing and video, do many of the apps have any settings to decrease the quality if the internet internet speed or bandwidth is limited? Well, yeah, I mean, th that's why I say leave video off as until it's a until it's necessary, because that in and of itself is going to single handedly suck the most bandwidth down. So to the extent that you can leave video off, do it. Um, if you do need it, there are settings in Zoom and WebEx both, I believe, to eliminate high definition. Um, so you mm -hmm. can reduce the quality. I have to look. Maybe we can get a link to the specifics on adjusting settings in Zoom for that. But mm -hmm. um, I'm fairly certain that you can not only reduce the resolution uh, quality, but also um, even the frame rates to some degree, probably. Mm -hmm. So but the, the best thing is to just leave it off, <laughs> you know, and screen sharing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, screen sharing takes up some bandwidth, but not nearly what uh, video takes up because of the frame rates mm -hmm. primarily and the, and the high quality 4k. If you have a 4k camera, you know, that's crazy. That's so much bandwidth going there. So, so if you're on a call and the connection is choppy and your video is on, if you drop video, then um, the, call while well, might it may not be perfect um the quality will probably get much better oh yeah and in and, and what are your kids doing or what are the others in your house doing are they you know upstairs watching netflix and everybody's <laughs> on the same internet so you may have to coordinate what folks are doing when you're going to be on a video call or something like that mm -hmm. um, so just a little bit of planning goes a long way for that for sure i i think the biggest question the biggest question for um for me, it comes back to the home office and the home office setup and figuring out what I need or what do I need to provide. And is that something that I'm better off um, using tools and figuring out myself? Is that something I can figure out myself or am I better off working with somebody to help me figure out what I need? Josh, you want that one or you want me to take it? Josh? Well, I think oh. that I think that if your work, if sorry, you're, my my mic was muted there. Um, oh. <laughs> go ahead. But no, go go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if your employer doesn't issue you a work, you know, station, a laptop, or whatever, then then I would recommend getting something that makes sense for you, and and hopefully it will also make sense for what you're doing at work. Generally speaking, people are going to spend a little more money on their personal gear and then use that for work than they would if it was just a work device. Alternatively, you can, you know, you can separate the two, have something that you use for work exclusively and it, and it 
it's kept that way. And then you have your personal. In fact, I would sort of recommend that because then you don't have to worry about, you know, the, the day to day, the personal Facebook stuff, all that getting mixed into your work and having a screen share and inadvertently having personal communications come into the screen or whatever. I think it'll go a long way to avoiding, you know, embarrassing moments or whatever it might be where the personal life is mixing in. So to the extent that you can establish a, a separate workspace for and hardware for work and personal, that's great. If you can't do that and your company isn't providing you with a, a laptop or something, then I would absolutely get what you feel is best for you. And then the tools, you know, integrating the tools into that and trying to keep it separated to the extent that you can. Um, but I mean, I use the same workstation for both personal stuff and work and you just have to have a, you know, keep it in mind that, you know, if, <laughs> if, you know, your kid texts you or gives, sends you an instant message while you're in a, a screen sharing, you know, keep it somewhere where it's not going to be visible or you're doing your banking, you know, or something like that. And someone has to remote access your machine that your financial statements aren't sitting there for people to see. That's, you know, that's mm -hmm. the big thing. Same with cameras. I mean, we talked about the bloopers and stuff going around, you know, be aware when you're on, when you're on video or on mic and when your mic isn't muted. I mean, I think frankly, Tani, we should have a meeting or a, uh, a webinar on meeting etiquette, frankly. <laughs> That's, yeah, I agree. That's definitely something that we can plan out there. There is a whole lot going around online right now, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a wave. I don't think this is going anywhere. I mean, we, you know, once people get a, a taste of work from home, whether it's remote access or getting set up in a work, you know, in a, in a you know, a virtual office or, a, you know, just a, a, you know, work at home environment. Um, I see those sort of as three different things. Um, once they sort of get that taste and realize they don't have to be stuck in the car for two hours a day, um, they're going to do it. And, and I think employers are going to be more inclined to let that happen as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank God, because um, that makes traffic. I mean, I was tra I mean, if, <laughs> of all the bad things that coronavirus brings to us, traffic is not one of them. I mean, it's mm -hmm. unbelievable driving around right now. How 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 easy it is to get around. Boy, that would be nice if it was this way all the time. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be? It, <laughs> yeah, it's and it's done a, because of that. It's done really good things for the environment as well, yeah. despite the impact that it's having on yeah, Econo and on the positive economy. light on right. things. Mm -hmm. Right, but now if we um, all do our part and make remote, you know, the transition from work to to home, you know, or, or working remotely from the office, um, the next time if and when this happens again, it won't be a big deal. I mean, we'll just be able to make that transition. The economy will continue to hum along, and with the exception. Mm -hmm. of hospitality you know i mean certainly there are going to be some industries where it's important to be on site and in person but um for the most part business will continue to hum along maybe we lose 25 percent instead of 100 percent or 50 percent mm -hmm. so just um as a you know as as a final just thought um i, I would say that one of the the most important things is is being prepared and what this means is think through everything that you do on a typical day at work and an atypical day at work to make sure that every single one of the activities that you do, whether it's meeting or um, it, everything is mapped to a particular tool or software or plan so that if something comes up unexpectedly, you don't panic or feel overwhelmed because you don't have something in place to handle that particular situation. So spending a little bit of time preparing and thinking through this and then kind of mapping this out. This is awesome and a really good way to use Evernote just to get started. Um, just to, to map out like what programs, what tools, how to use it and what questions you still have. So that way the questions are not just running around in your head because we, I, most people don't do well with a list of questions in their head. Always better to have the questions in front of you so that you feel prepared um, to, to basically perform whatever, whatever activity is being asked of you. Yeah, um, so, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, and I will say that from personal experience. So um, just as a final, you know, we are available to chat through our website. Um, 
So if you have any additional questions that we didn't answer or you need help thinking through what your virtual office looks like or should look like, either for yourself or for somebody else, um, please, uh, please connect with us. Um, you can call us, we'll chat, whatever's, whatever's needed, or we can set up a call to talk through probably on Zoom. Um, and we will be sending out um, both the slide deck with all the resources and links and also just uh, two or three questions just to see how we did. Like we said, this is the very first one that we're putting out, just trying to get people the information that they need so that they can uh, work more efficiently and feel better prepared for what's going to be a while before whatever this next phase is. Um, so thank you again for joining us. And, um, and I look too, forward right? to... We should encourage yeah, people absolutely. to send topics too. If there's something on your mind absolutely. that you want us to discuss, yeah, send it in. Mm -hmm. send it in. That'll definitely, yep, that'll definitely be part of it if there are any topics that you want us to see in the future. And it may be just a simple vote for some of the topics that we're considering discussing um, and getting your feedback would be really great. So thank you again so much for joining us. And Jason and Josh, thank you so much for all your expertise, all your information. Um, I know that sure. we're all always available to step in and help, yeah. but really appreciate you taking it. Yeah, time thank you. Today. Thank you for pulling all this together in such short yeah. order. That's been you. fantastic. Yeah. Very pleased with how this yeah. came together. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So, right, well, thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. Every uh, happy Friday. <laughs> right. mm, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.